dirty record killing the mood? Try Spin Clean. Simply load the basin with water in a capful of solution. Turn the record three times one way and three times the other, dry, and within minutes your records will sound as good as new. Units starting at just $79.99. Get yours today at SpinClean.com. SpinClean, the best reviewed cleaning device in the industry and proudly made in the USA since 1975. We are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Bob Dylan's second album, The Free Will and Bob Dylan, on Columbia Records from 1963. This is side one, track one, Blowing in the Wind. Now you may be asking yourself what's so special about this album other than it came out 50 years ago. Well, I'll tell you. You see, Dylan's first album tanked, only selling around 5,000 copies its first year. In fact, Columbia was this close to dropping him due to poor sales and the feeling that he didn't really fit in with the rest of the artists. But Columbia executive John Hammond refused to give up on Dylan because he not only discovered him, but signed him to the label. Hammond was determined to make Dylan's second album a success, and boy did it pay off, because it went platinum, reaching number 22 in the US and number one in the UK. This album launched Dylan's career and brought him to the forefront of the early 60s folk movement. Whether he wanted it or not, Dylan became the voice for a generation, and this song became an anthem for the civil rights movement. Blowing in the Wind would go on to be covered by such artists as Peter, Paul, and Mary, Sam Cooke, Dolly Parton, Neil Young, Duke Ellington, Etta James, Stevie Wonder, Bender from Futurama, Elvis Presley, Bobby Darin, and Bruce Springsteen. That list alone shows you Dylan's broad appeal and universal themes in his songwriting. Alright guys, we're going to jump on down to track 6, A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. Dylan wrote this in 1962 and premiered it later that year at Carnegie Hall as part of a folk series produced by Pete Seeger. The early 60s were a seminal time for music as the Beatles released their first album in the UK. The Rolling Stones became a band. The Supremes were signed to Motown Records. Pavarotti made his debut and the Beach Boys released their first single. This was also a time of great change in the U.S. with such historical events as the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Civil Rights Movement, and the beginning of the Space Race. So, with everything going on in the world, I feel like this record gave a sense of relief to the listener, an escape from the chaos of a busy day. There's just something so peaceful about the simplicity of the music. It's just Bob, a guitar, and a harmonica. And when you think about it, it's amazing that he was only 22 when he wrote these songs. But as he puts it, the songs are there. They exist all by themselves, just waiting for someone to write them down. I just put them down on paper. If I didn't do it, somebody else would. Flipping over to side two, we have track one, Don't Think Twice, It's Alright. This song was written for his then-girlfriend Susie Rotolo, who appears alongside Dylan on the cover. Right before the album's release, Columbia decided to pull four of the songs, replacing them with four other tracks. We still don't know the exact reasoning behind this decision, but there are two theories. The first being, in the weeks before the release, Dylan was set to appear on The Ed Sullivan Show, but the censors at CBS told him he couldn't play the song he wanted. In protest, Dylan walked away from the gig. When it was known that the song was to appear on this album, Columbia, who was owned by CBS at the time, pulled it along with three others. The second theory claims that because Dylan was recording new material up to the last minute, these songs were deemed too good to not be on the album. So they were quickly added, replacing four songs of lesser quality. I happen to believe it's probably a combination of the two theories. They're already pulling one song, might as well make other changes, you know what I mean? Whatever the reasoning, this action created one of the rarest records in history as a few copies with the original tracks were accidentally released to the public. Only about two copies in stereo and 40 in mono are known to exist. Just to give you an example, one stereo copy sold for over $35,000. So you might want to check your copy. You never know. We're jumping down to track five, Corina Corina. Now this song is interesting for two reasons. It's one of only two on the album not written by Bob Dylan, and it's the only one to feature other musicians. Geek. Velvet Lapel. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I heard the sound of cats dying. 
Turns out that's just yeah. Bob Dylan singing. I suppose you're entitled to your opinion, but you really have to take him into context. Oh, Evie. Oh, we're gonna have to listen to another one of your rants about the sanctity of music. Well, let me ask you this. Are you a fan of Springsteen? Oh yeah, man, he's the boss. The boss, man. Okay, what about Nirvana or uh, Pearl Jam? Now you're speaking my music, man. Well, all those singers owe a great deal to Mr. Bob Dylan. You see, he didn't just write great music, he changed the way people thought about singers. No longer was it necessary to have a pretty voice. As long as you conveyed a sense of truth, you would be accepted. So in that sense, Bob paved the way for singers with voices a little rough around the edges. What are you done? Oh, well, uh, touche, geek. You in this round. Yeah, okay. But I'll be back. I'm sure you will. Oh, I will be. But I'm taking this with me. Sorry about that, guys. That's Auntie Vinyl's ex-boyfriend, Veva Lapel. Who is that hot ass Auntie Vinyl? It was a messy breakup. All right, guys, we're gonna flip back over to side one to end with track two, The Girl from the North Country. This has gotta be one of the most beautiful songs on the album, and I just had to share it with you guys. Before I say goodbye, I wanna give a quick shout out to Gimme Gimme Records here in LA. I had a hard time finding this record, guys. I must have called every record store in town until I called Gimme Gimme, and they were cool enough to hold it for me until I could get there. The best part is they're just down the street from our friends at Wombleton Records, so you guys should really check them out for yourselves and tell them I sent you. And with that, I'm your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you she on the flip side. once was a true love man If you go in the snowflake storm I'm a wall with Yes you are. <laughs> was that okay up until that point? <laughs> <laughs>